Alright, we're back. And that's not showing up. Hey, there we go. Look at that. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. So, I'm going to be taking here and I'm going to be working on an old uh, um, RPG that I had adapted for Pathfinder. So, I'm taking portions of it so you never know what I'm going to work on. So, uh, the entire thing is here. This, uh, we're going to look at some of the background here. I'm going to read through some of the things here, summarize them. We're not going to get this entire thing done. So what I'm thinking here is I'm going to lead us to through the ruins of the city. You know, we're going to look through the ruins of the city and then we'll be done for today. And this is going to be, I'm going to save it as the D&D &D version of this. So there's the Kaladite people. This is the city that was once hold, home to it. Um, basically, they went mad, destroyed the city and left it, running into the wild to become savage monsters that the PCs would have encountered by now. What remains of these people is now violent, dangerous, hateful, aggressive, and little remembers little of their own past. Of course, they were menaced by strange underground creatures that began to burrow up under their city, which might still be there. Yep. So the death of the last king, basically the people fled the city. So, they're going to enter the city... Majority of it has been reclaimed by forest. A few buildings have structure. Those that do have heavy damage. And <laughs> no, it's not for misadventures. Where uh, what this is is if I run a if I run a long term campaign, I might run the Pathfinder version of this, or the D and D version of it. I do have to edit my Pathfinder version of it. It's a it's an adventure path I was writing on my own. So a long term adventure I was actually writing, which I'm hoping to get back to. And here's an exam. And here's an e excuse to get back to some of it to rewrite some of the earlier things but right now i'm trying to adapt it for dungeon and dragons from pathfinder so this was originally pathfinder so we, we might we might eliminate entire rooms from this entire thing if they seem too redundant that's another thing and try to rebalance some of the battles monsters i'm not going to stat out tonight uh because there might be some custom monsters that I would have to make for it not going to bother because I'm not an expert at statting monsters for Dungeons and Dragons for 5th edition Pathfinder much better okay so we're entering the castle of Yvain or the city of Yvain um, the forest is dense with light undergrowth uh, trees are massive nearly 100 foot tall tallest ones are 200 feet tall uh, there are areas of heavy undergrowth um and it's pretty densely packed for this kind of forest. So it looks a little bit like Redwood. Um, now I had 8 hours of travel. 20% chance of encountering an enemy. So. So I'm thinking right now. Um, I said that to make sure the PCs are 3rd level. Before reaching, this, reaching the city in the forest. 10% uh, while resting. Encounter rate. I'm probably going to come up with standard encounter rates based on things because I don't think these are the best encounter rates. So, um, hmm. we have to think about what's the encounter rate for fifth for normal fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons. Normally, it's like roll a die and hope to get a one. Um, so, I mean, easily speaking, we could move this to a 10% chance. Roll a one or a two. Ah, you're doing boring and repetitive stuff in D20. And let's turn this to a 5% chance. Which is basically, if they're resting, um, roll, and on a 20 or a 1, bam, they encounter something. And I have random encounter charts, which we're going to look at in an entirely different thing, because that's going to be its own quagmire of stuff to correct in this mess that I have. But this is going to be our first things. Less encounters. Less chances. And this is only if you're using random encounters. Oh, man, I have to space these out. The Nightbot things. Those of you who are watching this on VOD, Nightbot is being kind of a jerk. So. <laughs> Alright. So city. Encompassed by forest. There are some areas that are accessible. A few buildings. The edge of the forest. Very heavily damaged. Um, people, BCs will learn stuff here. So we're going to go down this list. Um, we're going to go through the F's, basically. 
Yeah, I mean, I made them a bit on the frequency side. Um, standard encounters. Every eight hours chance of encounter. Um, how about we make it like this? Every four hours, be, uh, traveling the PCs have... They have the standard chance of encountering and of having an encounter. Um, for a long rest, this is only one chance. There we go. So we've made it standard encounter rate, but with four hours, or long rest, basically when they're resting, one attempt. Uh, or if resting, eight hours. Well, let's, let's change that language. Uh, or if resting, the rate is every eight hours. There we go. So we're going to go through the F's, which there's only six F's here today. And yes, this means it's not going to be very long of RPG editing, but it is two hours into here, and I do want to get a couple hours of Fallout in before it gets way too late. Two or three hours of that in. So yes, I'm probably only going to go to like 1231 for this. We'll see what we get done. But we are going to look at each of these properly exactly each of them as their own thing and see if they're necessary in what I've written. Okay, so main gates. This is what I made to have people read out. So you always have things that you can have people read out. Like, I made this as if I could have this published, basically. Uh, from amongst the trees, you begin to get glimpses of the towers in the distance. As you follow the site, you eventually emerge out into a clearing. As your feet hit cobbled stone, you realize this is some sort of road leading in directly towards the tower. Small grasses and plants emerge from between the stones of this road, and statues and columns line the road, up to massive walls in the distance. The statues are of armored soldiers, alternately carrying swords and shields, but held high. Finally, more carved marble columns lie in between these statues. Many are still intact, but a few have, a few are cracked or fallen. Down the long road, Massive walls crown your sight, nearly as high as the trees. Behind it is a massive tower, whose to tower you had spotted earlier, that seems to stretch to the sky, perhaps higher than any tree in this forest. In front of you at the end of the road, the wall lies open. Massive gates of iron, steel, and wood, nearly as high as the walls, and as wide as the road, lie open, revealing the city beyond. As you approach the door, you realize only one remains on its hinges. The other has fallen. Now its shattered remains reclaimed by the forest. Even the walls seem to feel the grip of the forest as vines and branches break holes into it, crushing parts of it to be collapsed in some parts. This pulley represents the battle of civilization against nature. How's that for an opening for entering into this place? So the gates, main gates of the city, a long walkway that they'll find about a thousand feet long, and you... I, I said here, merge somewhere in the middle of it. Uh, gates left open when the city was abandoned. Machinery that moves the mass of iron steel doors is rusted and corroded as now unusable. Only one of the doors remains upright. The other fell parallel to the wall, broken into many pieces. And the PCs can find the remains of the door. The remaining door is decorated and carved with warriors and soldiers defending in enemies of the castle in very graphic and brutal ways. Basically, the people of this town wanted to show off that they are indeed powerful warriors in a way, and they did it on the gates to their city. That's something. Now I might have to scan my maps. I had maps of this. So I might have to find them. If I remember where I have them. Or I will um, show them to whatever everybody up. I'll like, I'll like have people be able to look at them when I can find the maps. I made really simple maps. I might try to make better maps <laughs> maybe one of the sessions here I'll actually make better maps out of these ones that I have so maybe we'll work on 
the Castle of Vain for the next couple of weeks. A little bit of work at a time. <clears throat> I make it extra sessions in during the week. So, let's talk about the first building I added in here. Old Taylor Shop. It has two rooms on the first floor, a shop area and a kitchen dining area. The second floor has a simple bedroom and a basement of storage of the shop. Most of the work appears to have been done down in the basement area of the shop. The rooms are relatively intact, with little damage, wildlife, and plants. Only age has worn the building. Um, there's little value in there. Uh, the cloth is rotten, deteriorated in the basement. On the second floor, next to the bed, is a small shrine to a deity of the Caladites, Kelnicor. The shrine is fairly nondescript, but does have a strange effigy lying on it. Cards of incredibly hard stone and intact. It is a simple representation of the Earth Lord, and it could be identified with a Knowledge 40 religion check. Now, I made that very difficult, because they're not supposed to know about it now. But, in this case, since we're changing it to 5th edition, I want it to be obscure, like highly obscure 5th edition. So I'm going to change the DC of this. This is something that in the, it matches the history of their own people, but it's like ancient civilizations, like a couple thousand years old, forgotten, buried under the history of their people. So we're going to change this to a DC 30 religion check. I'm still going to have this obscure. The PCs, if they choose to take it with them, think of 25 for something highly obscure. Uh, 30 works too. Yep. So the PCs do have access to a sage back in their own hometown. Um, and though they are level three, at this point in time, they are either supposed they were supposed to be able to either take this to the sage, or I, I felt like they could get lucky. They're only level 3. But since it is... I had it 40 before, which they wouldn't have the plus 4 if it was Pathfinder. Which I felt was actually too difficult. They should I should have made it 30. That means it might have been possible even at 3rd level. So let's make this 25. It's 25. They'll know it's of Kelnicor, an old deity in the world that they'll know nothing about, but know the name of it. They heard it in a obscure book somewhere about dead religions. So, 25. We're going to make it a little more accessible. I was thinking way too difficult before. It's still going to be hard for our D&D characters, but more than likely when I move back to the Pathfinder, I'll probably change this to like a 30. Which, um, let's save this as. This is going to be D&D version. Save. Now I am going to open up so can I open up a second one? I can. So we're going to go in here and we're going to change it on the Pathfinder one to 30 because at the same time as I'm editing it here, I can edit it over there. Um... Uh, for every eight hours of travel piece you have, uh, standard encounter, standard encounter rate, every four hours, this is reduced to... This rate changes to, oh, this rate changes to, um, every eight hours while resting. Cool. Because I do want to edit it on the Pathfinder side, too. Um... Let's let's save the copy. Uh, path, path, Pathfinder. Awesome.
so yeah, so DC 25 is a better idea. Thank you, Worm, for the information there. So we'll keep it with a 25. It's possible, but more than likely, they are going to have to go to their sage friend to find information. So building in a tree, I broke down into multiple rooms, multiple types of impossible encounters, hence it's a B. We might edit that down to a single room slash single encounter when we get to that. So that's what I'm going to say about these things. We might be cutting this down that a lot of these extra letters might be going down to one thing. And we might just keep Castle of Vane having multiple rooms. Let's look at the city square. So, a large square extends before you as you enter the city. Most of the shops that once lined this area are now completely engulfed by forest. What remains of the carts and stands that once seemed to fill this area is nothing more than splinters and rotting heaps. Intricate tiling on the cobblestone of the area is now mostly faded. Before you, the central castle looms. Its heavy iron doors shut the world. Elaborate carvings and statues of strange creatures you have never seen before decorate the buildings here, and upon the castle they are prevalent. A few birds can be heard calling in the distance, otherwise this place is silent and dead. It's a marketplace. Um, and the carvings are supposed to be of creatures that served Kelnicor, their main deity. Um, and... I was going to invent a number of creatures to serve Kalnikor because the vestiges of his religion exist in this world. Um, which the most prevalent one was supposed to be Dimensional Guardian, which was a cross between a spider, a bat, a scorpion, a snake, and a humanoid. Figured that one for a mixing bowl of horror. For, it's not quite an Elder God because it's not Cthulhuian, but for a bestial god, I would best call it. A god of earth and beasts. All right, so the square, simple, but as they enter the city, more exposi exposition is meant to fill them with knowledge of the place. We're keeping it simple. Of course, then we have Y, Old Inn, J, General Store. Again, both of these I might alter more down rooms. K is the dining hall. F was the collapsed building. These buildings have completely collapsed on themselves. Nothing of value can be found in the wreckage. If you search the rubble for an hour, you reveal 1d10 1 d ten times 10 gold pieces worth of valuables hidden under the rubble. Um, hmm. Let's change this to... I mean, they don't need a... Do I want to have them find a lot of valuables? If they really search the place, we can have them find valuables. But times 10, even in 5th edition, 1d10 gold pieces worth of valuables. No, 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 we'll be nice. 2d10. Um, they can only do this um, for 1d6 uh, buildings before no more to deal any value valuables okay we just changed that there the collapse buildings we altered that a bit i think this works perfectly for pathfinder too you know it's not a huge amount of money and i can rebalance this little extra bits of cash and the fact is if you wanted to do this for a little bit more cash for your players hey you could have them find a little bit more it's a way of Balancing out if you feel like they don't have quite enough treasure. Just a little bit here and there. And you could do times 10. That's the option. Um, um, dining Hall's K. Again, that's a building we're going to edit. Five, the overgrown buildings. Again, I, if I had the map show you, it will mark off a number of the collapsed building and overgrown buildings. Uh, these buildings have been eaten by the forest. They are still partially intact. With some effort, the PCs could enter the building. But the damage the building has made it impossible to find anything of value. Um, oh, the explore one of the buildings, they have a 25%. Uh, explore one of the buildings. Uh, roll to see if they find a random encounter. There we go. So you could have a random encounter if you enter into if you explore one of the buildings completely. Rather than a 20% chance, you basically make your normal random encounter check 
if you're exploring that thing. This works again also for Pathfinder. Just exactly as that sounds. Um, um, Tanners. Again, it's another building I have to edit. Six intact homes. Buildings are intact. Nothing of value can be found, but it's secured and defendable. It's a safe area to rest. City's empty, but things do patrol it in the ground, in its grounds, in search of prey. Basically, there are random encounters. So, if you just don't want to rest in the city, you need some place that you can find to defend yourself, and they can find intact homes to basically hold up and rest. Mm, I see. Then, of course, we have the Overgrown Cathedral, the Wrecked Blacksmith, the Strange Cave in the Street, and the Castle itself, which I will be marking where to go to them. All right, the building in a tree. So, we still have some time. Let's move into some of these more exact places, which I, I, I interestingly le lettered. Okay. Um, a, tr a small tree growing in the middle of it. Originally, it was used by a priest of the cathedral. His and his family managed to escape and they fled in the city. It's partially collapsed and filled with greenery. Okay, so it had four rooms originally when I was describing it. Um, let's see here. Entrance hall. As you push down the open, dust and debris fall to the ground. In front of you, a large tree and twisted roots dominate the building, choking the center and piercing the roof. Closer inspection reveals something fell through the roof long before the tree grew here. The tree has only used the opportunity to find a place to grow. Uh, the tree and the wreckage of the building choke this area. The stairs have been pushed into but are mostly intact. Accessible on the floor. The other is the room is empty. Um. So I have the sitting room down here. Where you can find a masterwork like crossbow, I said. It's aged and has taken some damage. Uh, did I want to give people a masterwork like crossbow and pathfinder? I mean, it's equipment. And the fact is, the way I built this adventure, they can take any equipment they can get. You'll learn more as I do more of these different areas of the buildings. I like the masterwork like crossbow as a piece of equipment that I'm going to give them. Someone might be able to use it. If not, the town itself that they come from could use it. In the case of D&D, &D, though, I think we have to change it. Um, I don't have to read up on the sitting room. Because it shambles the back. Because it's like this. Like, it's furniture's room. Lives heaps. Strange things. Small animals scurry about when they enter a hiding spot. First from animals most well attacked. Um, so I think I can combine these two into one room. And call this first floor. First floor. And uh, beyond the door was once the sitting room of the house. It is in shambles. The back of the room has collapsed. Um, there we go. So now, rather than having an entrance hall, it's a little bit more of an entry. First floor. Uh, um, but, but, but mostly intact. Okay. That can really choke this area. Let's change how this is read. Okay. The tree... Uh... Chokes out most of the first floor. The stairs are still usable to head to the second floor. Uh, to one part of the floor is an old to one to the only open 
side of the build of this floor is an old sitting room filled with small insects and <clears throat> animals. An intact mantle dom dominates this area. There we go. So now I will copy this over to my Pathfinder one because I just did change this completely. We got rid of those two. And changed that a lot. Bam. Got rid of one of the rooms. Because we did not need four rooms in this area. I, know I might be able to get rid of the second floor hall. Um, uh, so, we're also changing this. So this is a light crossbow. No masterwork. Just a light crossbow. Boop. So they find they can find one if that if they didn't have a light crossbow. They can have one. There isn't really masterwork in fifth edition, so yeah. All right, second floor hall. Um, I wanted to have acrobatics not to fall when they get up to the second floor. Um, then they take damage if they fall down. That's a dick move. I don't need that. Why do we need that? Let's just make it that there's two rooms here. Second floor hall. You can go away on Pathfinder. You can go away on D&D. Because, heck, we don't need you. It's just a dick move on my end. Have them fall through to something. Now here's the Pathfinder one. Uh, bedroom of the priest and his wife. Remains of the bed and dresser, a large portion of the room. I know damage from falling is fun, but um, I can make a note that um, uh, I can do that right here if I want to. Um, I could add this. Yeah, I know. They'll have chances to fall in other places. I don't have to hit them here. Okay? Damage from falling is fun. But I don't have to dick with them at this moment. It's not. It's an extra just D6 randomly that I don't actually need to give them. And, and I do want to cut down some things of dicking with them anyway. I dicked with characters way too much for my first time building this. So, the bedroom of the priest and wife... Um, there's a large branch sticking through it. It's in good shape. Um, back of the room. Under the branch is an unopened chest in a decent condition. It appears to be pushed there by the breaking furniture. There's garden oozes in here. Which is a Pathfinder monster. So, yeah. It's, it's, that's just it. It's a Pathfinder monster. Um, and I had two of them. Garden ooze. Let me look it up in Pathfinder. I'm going to have to replace it with something. There's CR2s, small oozes, uh, the camouflage and trees. So that's kind of cool. They are an interesting creature, I must say. I found them, and I wanted to use an ooze. They live in the tree. So two of them, CR4, battle, third level characters. Your characters should be able to take them out. But I'm thinking with the way I want to explore this for my Pathfinder side here, I'm going to reduce it down to one. Reduce it down to one. Just one garden news. Um, I'm going to have to change that to a CR2 encounter. Because I will... God, I'm going to have to rebalance experience over the entire adventure for the Pathfinder. But if I'm missing experience, quest rewards. Quest rewards, quest rewards, quest rewards. There are a whole bunch of points along an adventure you can throw in quest rewards. So, rebalancing like this, not a problem. For my side here, maybe I want to have some CR2 kind of encounters. Let's look up uh, Monster by CR once again, because I love doing this for 5th edition. Because I can actually find Monster by Challenge rating uh, <laughs> online. 
Roll 20, actually, is what gives it to me. So a CR 2 would be an Awakened Tree. Could I have it that the tree is just a, dirt, a jerk, at least that portion of the tree, and attacks them? That it's a wakened branch, it counts as the tree. Same AC, much smaller size. Um, All the same statistics except for the fact that it just... Is the branch. Maybe. That's actually not a bad idea. Awakened branch. Some kind of dark magic has made it awaken. Smack some people in the face. There are plenty of other CR2s, but I like the idea of the awakened branch. <laughs> uh, so, for, Pat, for this one here. An awakened branch. Branch. CR2. XP, something or other. Uh, strange magic in the area has awakened one of the tree's bran branches into a dangerous creature. It waits until the PCs get close and then strikes against them. It can attack anything in the bedroom. Hey, there we go! I'm I'm bad with XP when it comes to... I, I'm not going to bother, like, trying to fully, like, write down all the information here right now because I don't have the book in front of me to look that up. But here we've making... Uh... Awakened... Tree. There we go. Awakened tree. I mean, awakened branch. That'll smack the crud out of our PCs. And then an inside a lock tress with a clerical outfit and decent chase, a breastplate, a morning star, and a key. The priest's robes are ceremonial. The key unlocks the doors to the cathedral. Though rarely locked, it could be sealed up. And were when the city was abandoned. That's it. So, no, I don't prevent the characters from breaking down doors. But if they don't want to break down one, hey, they find a key here to the cathedral. And a breastplate. And guess what? I think Breastplate and Morningstar are in 5th edition. Is that Morningstar in 5th edition? Oh my god, I don't have the... When you don't have books in front of you to, like, reference the fact that... Is there... Hmm. Morningstar in 5th edition. Man. Um, I don't have the... I don't have my player's guide up here. So, we'll pretend there's Morningstars in 5th edition. We'll call it a day. Oh, wait, I need a morning star. There are morning stars. Eh, we'll call it a mace then. We'll call it a mace because that's simple and I don't have to worry about uh Oh. Morning star. Oh no, Morningstar exists. It shows up when I use the Roll 20 5th Edition Compendium. So, yay, Roll 20 5th Edition Compendium, which is where I've got a Quake and Tree in. Morningstar and Breastplate. Cool. Both exist, both I don't have to worry about. Alright, so we've now made the building and the tree, and hey, I think we improved it. We made a. We made a. 5th edition version of it, where you will fight an awakened branch. And we made our Pathfinder version, and with it, there's some kind of green ooze monsters live in, there's a green ooze monster in it. Both try to surprise you. Granted, one bludgeons you in the face with a branch, and the other tries to acid it, but cool. A 
let's keep going. Uh, let's go on to a one, and then I'll get like two or three hours of Fallout in. Um, you know. Well, one o'clock my time. Uh, we'll take a short break when we're getting close to it. Let's at least do one more building here. And then I might start a little early on Fallout, so I don't get too long. Uh, we'll make sure to just save it here. And we will save the Pathfinder one, too, because we're making some cool edits. The Old Inn. All right. Uh, main Inn of the City. Travelers used it uh, when the city was in the Old World. When the city was taken to this land, the inn functioned more as a bar. Few rooms are still used. Signs in the remains in the rooms. These rooms were... Uh, these rooms were by individuals using them long term. Wow, that's not English. Uh, like all places in town, they were abandoned. Um, uh, these rooms ended up used for long-term stay. Yay! English better. I mean, English that is better. All right. Let's take a look here. Uh, entryway and bar. The left wall of this room is dominated by a large bar. The far wall is a simple desk. The door leads out of the room. Uh, one door leads out of the room. Tables and chairs have splintered and broken, leaving piles of debris throughout the room. Bottles and glasses stacked the bar have broken. Uh, the check-in desk is barely holding together. The door in the back is slightly jar, and the room tells it's slightly acidic, and there are a few old spa spoiled wines that hold liquor. A small till behind the bar had some cash. You know what? We can keep that. Uh, storeroom and kitchen. Room was once used as a store. Any food and drink that was used in the bar. Smaller for prepping meal. Old stove. Fireplace dominated. Um, old rusted tools. Um, hmm. Um, stain. Odd color. Pair of meat hooks. You know, it's... <sighs> I mean, I mentioned the fact that um, they ate people? Well, other intelligent humanoids. This race. Because it is another race that lived here. Um, but I think the storeroom and kitchen can just be eliminated. So I think we can make a note back over here. The back room is a store storage area that doubled as a small kitchen. It has signs of butchering there, um, which does not reveal the A butchering of other humano humanoids was practiced in the city. Okay, there we go. Bam. I eliminated an entire room of this place just by doing that. It's, it's much more concise. Congratulations, old in. You've been edited. Uh, let me just check because I can check the old one. Storage room that doubled a small kitchen. Signs of butchering, which does not, do not, which do not reveal the butchering of other human, which do not reveal. Uh, there are signs of butchering there, which the, which the butcher there, uh, there's, the, it has signs of butchering there, uh, since the practice of eating other humanoids was popular in the cities. Hey, Dad. Sure, that sounds better. 
Uh, sorry. I'm editing things on multiple levels. And I should have done that over here, where you guys would have seen me edit that. And struggle with sentences. Struggle with a little intro. I English. Um... You don't have to mention anything about rusted tools or anything like a small drainage area. Yeah, that all stuff is like, you know, terrible. And it's mentioning just that uh, in the civilization, the city's heyday. Yeah. Uh, eating other humanoids was popular. Yeah. Butchering area in the inn with the practice of eating other humanoids. It mentions it there. Quick, efficient done. Till's great. Whole room. Okay. Whole room. Room is barred from the outside with two large wooden beams placed across the top and bottom of the door, respectively. Strength DC 20 to lift it out of the, to lift out of the way. I mean, it's gonna be heavy, but not that heavy for bars. So, um... 10 for here. 15 for Pathfinder. For two bars in the way. And as you open the door to the room, a strange draft wafts by you. Uh, whatever this room was once used for now dominated by a large hole. The walls of the room are littered with strange scratch mark and old blood stains. Rock and dirt cover the last remains of the room's decor. The hole once allowed for a creature perhaps the size of a man to enter this building. Now it's partially collapsed, forming a... Now it, it has partially collapsed? No, it's collapsed. Forming a 20-foot pit. At the bottom of the pit is a small hole with enough room for something the size of a house cat to squeeze through. Uh, partially collapsed. It's collapsed. It was once a tunnel. Horrible things came through the tunnel. Guess what? Tunnels collapsed. Uh, the room once was a guest room until a fallen crawler dug in, slaughtered the occupants. Guards were on the mountain to drive the beast off. But they could not close the hole. The room was sealed off. Uh, and it leads to the colony caverns in another area. Tunnel's 500 feet long. That's actually pretty simple. Um, yeah, I guess this 15 is good in D&D too. 15 for both. For strength. It's a little difficult. You might need help from someone to lift them out of the way. It's supposed to represent that it's just heavy. Not an actual thing to avoid it. Um, but this is going to be room two. We do have to correct this. We are room two now. Um, since we got rid of a room. We'll have to correct this a lot more. All these room numbers. But the whole room, it's, it's really supposed to be for show. That's an easy way of saying it. Show. It's showing off something, you know. It's showing off something horrible happened in this place. And I don't mind keeping that there. Innkeeper's room. Uh, innkeeper's room. Um, I probably don't even need this. Um, I could probably combine these together and make these two, like, Y4 unoccupied rooms. Um, or Y3 it would be. Uh, uh, these are the remaining rooms. Uh, of the inn used by guest and innkeeper alike. They are large, largely in ruin. How did I describe it? Um, uh, with remains of, with the remains of bed, beds and other furniture the only noticeable feature remaining cool the new Y3 is complete unoccupied room 
Paste. So, now we've eliminated yet another room from our thing. Cleaving two. And we'll call it actually unoccupied rooms. I'm sorry, we want to do proper English here. Because we've just combined these two rooms and effectively are marking two of the places the same. Y6, occupied room. Decorating saxophone, except it's got a giant cockroach in it. That was it. I threw a giant cockroach in there. Do we have a giant cockroach in 5th edition? Please tell me we have a giant cockroach in 5th edition. I mean, I could do something similar with a swarm of insects, maybe? Because I don't think we have a giant cockroach, unfortunately. A giant centipede? Eh, it's not quite the cockroach. But it'd be funny. Giant fire beetle, zero. CR. Not a threat. The giant fire beetle's lame. It's lame. It doesn't do anything. I mean, there's got to be another giant beetle. Look at... Uh, there's giant fire beetle and swarm of beetles. Giant fire beetle is CR zero. Swarm of beetles? Let's check out swarm of beetles. That's an actual thing, apparently. CR one half. So, uh, we'll call it swarm of cockroaches, except it's now swarm of beetles. Cool. Swarm of. Uh, I can, God. I have to re reference how I spell cockroach because I'm forgetting. God, it is exactly how roaches swarm of beetles. Cool, look at that. So basically, it's just dick with people. It's a giant cockroach in Pathfinder. You, uh, add it in there. Yeah, I could just add attack to the beetle. But I like the idea of, like, keeping it simple. And we'll just do, like, now instead of the giant beetle, which was lame. And <coughs> we're just doing the swarm from before and redoing it a little bit. Um, so this is going to be Y4. We'll keep a fifth room. We'll keep it down to four. Uh, I mean... I could actually eliminate the beetle slash cockroach room, but it's funny. It's funny that you open a room and you get attacked by either a giant cockroach or a swarm of cockroaches. Look, I was a jerk to people, and as a extra random encounter in an, event, an adventure, I put a swarm of cockroaches down an old toilet. People checked out a toilet in a haunted prison. They just went in there to see what was in there. They looked down the hole. And I had cockroaches swarm out. Cockroaches that went all over them and into their mouths and such. I'm a horrible person when it comes to these types of things. Itchy nose. Ah, nose itch. Okay, lock room. Uh, doors locked with a DC 25. Possible but difficult. Um... In Pathfinder, where you can keep retrying it forever, uh, yeah. So I, I like they described it that like they're crawling everywhere because the person was like nauseated by the swarm, and they're like they're going into your mouth and every orifice. And I was so horrible, that poor person. It was wonderful. I'm evil. Okay, I think I should reduce the DC by a little bit. Fifth edition. Okay. Uh, so we're reducing it down to a twenty DC. Uh, possible but difficult. The Pathfinder one, you can retry it pretty much forever, so. Room is torn apart, nothing of value remains in the room. A creature, a. After a fight with the one by the patrons locked in this room. Night before the town is, he was left to die. His rage raised him as undead. I brings the zon. Um. 
Doesn't have weapons, attacks with claws. It swipes up nearest living creature and attacks until dead. I like this happening. <laughs> I like having some kind of like undead in the room. Um, let's see if we can find a CR4 undead to represent this. I could make it a ghost. But that's kind of a ghost or dick moves. Because they can uh, possess. Um, and they're difficult to deal with. So ghosts are real dick moves. So I don't think I want to do ghost. I think I want to do... Let's make a white. White's not bad. Um, it just you. It, it basically can make two long sword attacks or two longbow attacks, or it can use its life drain in place of one of its longbow attacks. Uh, so during combat, it 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 has no weapons, so. So it will just use its life drain each turn. And um, same thing, but we're going to be uh, white. And now it'll be a CR3 instead. Different amount of hit points, different amount of EXP. We'll just call it white. CR3 encounter. Oh, that's a 43. Lock room is now a white. Granted, I can't do anything super special, but um, a white's cool. Like Pathfinder, the only thing I really feel great about it is they have much huge, like a huge selection of monsters. D and D does have monsters, but if I'm looking for a huge amount of variety at certain CRs, I'm not gonna have it. I can be creative, like my cockroach swarm and my branch, but like for undead here, I'm just gonna call it a white. Life train's fine. Um, I mean, I could do something else. I could do, like, uh, a ghast with maximum hit points. Might not be a bad thing. Uh, actually, that might be a pretty difficult thing. Uh, that'd be pretty difficult. Uh, it would have, you would have 64 hit points. Ooh. Twice the amount of hit points it would normal have, normally have. That would definitely make it more difficult. Uh, um... Okay. Normally, gas does not have multi -tip. You know what? Um, a gas. Let's make it CR four. Uh, this gas has max minimum hit points and multi attack. Uh, has no weapons, so it attacks with its bite and claws. There we go. I now became more creative. A gas with maximum hit points and multi attack. I felt like that gave it to CR because maximum hit points doubled its hit points. It went from 36 to 64. Or do we think that would be only CR3? <coughs> excuse me. Oh. Excuse me. Ooh. Ooh. Choking there a little bit. Ooh. God, I should have changed what the um, stream was long ago. It probably still says Pathfinder. Shoot. Uh, we're technically, uh, Dungeons and Dragons right now, so let's just change that update. I was gonna update it for Vampire, because apparently Vampire does exist, but I forgot to. Oops. My bad. Alright. I mean, the max hit points is definitely gonna put up another CR, but would multi-attack throw it up that second CR? See, the maximum hit points just means it's going to last longer. That's it. Doesn't make it any more deadly. Um, let's put it as a CR4. Yeah, let's put it at the CR4. It might be an easy CR4, but we can consider it that. 
the max hit points multi-attack ghast is born all right so i am going to stop the editing for today we went through a couple of rooms i actually like the work we've done um i have improved both the pathfinder and the D, D the new DD versions of both of these and we'll continue this actually probably next week uh with more editing we'll continue working on this same area um we'll have this general store to work on and more and we'll keep on going